So the film is kind of a road movie because I wanted to have very intimate, tiny scenes of putting someone, a little kid, to bed, but then also be thrust out across like America, across multiple cities, and to be dealing with sort of America at large. Well, the idea for Come On, Come On definitely came from my kid, just being around my kid and the world that sort of my kid introduced me to, like other kids, other parents, other moms, moms in particular, my kid's mom, and just the whole experience of trying to, such a heavy experience taking care of a person and the impact they have on you and trying to show them the world. It kind of like, it's the most intimate personal thing and the most public, social, historical, big thing at the same time. So I wanted to write something about that space of just like, try and take care of someone and the impact it has on the adult, like how, how much it changes the adult. Yeah, in the film we interview a bunch of real kids are like, I don't know, 10 to 14 years old. And they're just real non-actor people from the different cities that we were filming in. And again, it was this idea of like, I want to make a film that has like scenes that are as intimate as like giving your kid a bath, right? But then it's also thrown up against the largest issues that are happening in our society. And I wanted the kids to talk about that. So we interviewed all these young people about the future, what they feel like life is like now, their, their understanding of the world asked to them in the kind of highest, most adult way, and really wanted their real answers to be the, almost like the setting of the film. Like these kids take on America nowadays. That's sort of like the landscape that my two little figures were walking through. When you think about the future, how do you imagine it'll be? What will stay with you? And what will you forget? You know, I have a nine-year-old lead of a film, right? And it, they're going to be co-starring with Joaquin Phoenix. So we anticipated it's going to be the hardest thing in the world. And maybe the film actually won't happen. Like, Joaquin and I kind of had this agreement that, like, that's going to have to be a hell of a kid. And who knows if I'll actually find that kid. And let's just agree to not make the move if we don't feel like 100% we found a rad kid. Uh, and so we allotted a bunch of money to, like, for this long, search that we thought we're going to do and it might be international maybe all over the place and then in the first link i get from my casting person there's woody like he's kid number three or something like that and he's quite amazing and i said oh i want to see this woody person and they said oh well he's in london i'm like oh he's on vacation no no he lives there oh he's an american kid that lives in london no no he's british he's never been to america or maybe he's been to new york once and so that was just totally wild, totally like the film gods helped us out. It was totally, it shouldn't have been that easy, shouldn't have been anything like that. And we brought him to the States to meet Joaquin. Joaquin shows up in his pajamas, I'm pretty sure. You know, they were doing really well together, but we quickly realized the more freedom you give Woody, the more playful it is, the more sort of inventive and like spirited. Because Joaquin's really funny, but Woody's just right there with the response every single time. Like they really went toe to toe right away. So it was really pretty obvious to us that like, that's the only kid that could do this. Or, or Jesse is not just Woody. Whatever preconceptions you may have had, it's Woody. So we're going down the Woody train tracks. They definitely brought their own intelligence and humor to scenes. So there's, the script is very written, but there's definitely moments where they just take off or they bounce off each other a lot. So they just vibe on each other. Or they, they challenge each other a fair amount in scenes. And, and they're always just right there with each other. So like there's that star child scene where they're reading the book and it's all what I wrote. And then at the very end, Woody added, you have the mental capacity of a deceased person, which is a very funny line, especially for a nine year old to just improv. But the real benefit of Woody saying that is that Joaquin just laughs his ass off because that's such a funny line, right? So yes, little doses of that real connection between the two, I definitely encouraged. Maybe we can just take this process slowly and see how, see how it feels. You are just terrible at this. Oh man, I'm trying. <laughs> the story came from me and my kid, but I had to get away from us. I didn't want to like invade on my kid's privacy too much. I was looking for ways to make it not us. And when I came up with the uncle thing, I was like, oh, the cool thing about that is he's an estranged uncle, a person who's never had it, an adult who's never had a kid. That's really what it is. So if you're an adult, has never had a kid, is all of a sudden alone with a kid, and it's your job to take care of him, you're gonna have to learn how to parent incredibly quickly. And of course, the film loves that kind of compression. So every scene, it's like he doesn't know how to do 
what needs to be done in like almost every moment. So it's almost like a Buster Keaton sort of technique, like just being bad at your job, you know. And I really wanted the man to not be like broken down or weird or or kind of a goof. Like there's so many men that are like that in film and television. And I wanted to be like, yeah, he's been to therapy. Yeah, he can talk about his emotions. His life isn't as he exactly wants it to be at all, but it's not because he's a failure in any way. And I just knew that Joaquin would bring his intelligence and, and humor and all that to, to the role. And that, I, let's be honest, I can be too sweet. Joaquin isn't too sweet. So I thought we would make a good combination. And I think it really played out. Like he brought a fun edge to the whole thing. Gabby was right for Viv because Again, what a smart person, right? And it shows up in all of her performances. There's such a lack of cliche and lack of any any smell of acting, right? It just feels like very real, like a big inhale of like real life. So that I just love that. And then um, I knew that she was a mom and she kind of, I think she agreed or she had a lot of like overlap with Viv, the character's mom's styles, you know, or the ideas of what parenting is. So I felt like she could like really invest in this. And then they look great together. Like Joaquin and Gabby really look familial to me. And sure enough, when they first met, from that point on, I had no control over the two of them as a director. Like when they're together, it's they just, they're laughing so much or razzing each other so much, you cannot control them, which is great. Like it's what you want, what I want as a director. There's a great moment that Gabby has uh, where she's talking about, um, I don't, I don't always love it. Sometimes I really hate being a mother. It's because I love them so much, and I don't. So, uh, that makes it all the harder because I love them more than I could ever express. But I got to do the dishes, and I got to do this. And she's going through this whole pile of stuff that a mom has to do, and she does an amazing performance at it. And it just like flows off; it just takes flight. So I, I, watching that happen, I was like totally impressed. The other impressive part of that scene is it's Joaquin Phoenix's idea, that scene. So when we were writing, I was playing around with Joaquin, he's like, man, the, the stuff that mom, women, people have to go through is so much a bigger spectrum than us men, so much more they have to deal with. And all the guilt if you're not being a best mom in the world, and all the guilt if you can't just totally love being the mom the whole time. That was his perspective that I integrated into the script, and then Gabby made like a pretty genius moment out of it. Keeps asking me why we don't talk. You could tell him the truth. Mom died and got into all that weird stuff. That weird stuff of our entire lives. The decision to make the film of Black and White, it's how I saw it from the beginning. I always saw like this kid character, an adult character, kind of walking through New York City landscapes or LA landscapes or New Orleans landscapes in black and white. And I think that's partly because that image to me is like a archetypal, fable, mythological kind of image, right? The kid and the adult. And I wanted to like have this film have that feeling of like, yeah, it has documentary qualities to it, it has actual documentary parts to it, and it feels very now, but it also feels like a classic or some film you just haven't seen. So the film is kind of a road movie because I wanted to have, yes, very intimate tiny scenes of putting someone, a little kid to bed, like being in bed with a kid, but then also be thrust out across like America, across multiple cities and to be dealing with sort of America at large. Very intimate, highly, highly intimate, but then thrown up against the kind of a, a mural landscape of American life. I, I love Joaquin and Woody together. And there's a scene of them in New Orleans after there's this parade scene. And it's a quiet scene between the two of them. And they're just like holding hands and Woody plops his head down on Joaquin's chest. And it's because they just, we shot an order. They've been together for like months now. And they were just like great friends by that point and kind of, I think, loved each other in some way. So the film is like, it's this scene, but it's also what's really happening. I watched that scene happen and I, it's much more than my direction. You know, it's just like this event. Well, there's two people, but like Molly Webster, who plays like uh, Joaquin's radio journalist partner. Um, they have a show together. So Molly really is radio journalist. She comes from Radio Lab, And Molly's presence on our set was such a lovely presence. It helped all of our interview pieces of the film be so real, because she's that's what she does. And, and it made Joaquin really get on his best behavior about like how to do that, or it scared Joaquin that he wouldn't do it right. So like it, it made it brought out the best. 
And then Molly's just a highly intelligent, lovely person that infused all the scenes, the ones that she wasn't in with as part of like the family of, the, of our film family. Uh, well, Jane Campion, I've learned so much from over the years and she has such a particular way of making films, of putting them together. I feel like so personal and so physical. She's so amazing at capturing physicality. And just her whole career has meant so much to me. Um, it's particularities and the way it just feels so uniquely her um, and not like part of a business of any kind. So I'm, I got to see her at the film festival and saw her film and I'm just very in awe of her.